Remember, remember the fifth of December, Scientology's treason and plot. I know of no reason why Lisa McPherson should ever be forgot. You say the misuse, but I don't know if you're aware that there was a plan in 1955 in this country, Ted, to repeat what was done in Russia. There was going to be a Siberia USA set up on a million acres in Alaska to send mental patients. They were going to lessen the commitment laws. You could basically get into an argument with somebody and be sent up there. This sounds very odd. Nobody's ever heard about it. That's in no small part thanks to the Church of Scientology. People say in the United States that these things can happen here. Uh, mental screening that only took place in the old Soviet Union or communist Vietnam or those places. It's not true. I want to talk in some detail about the Citizens Commission for Human Rights or the CCHR. The CCHR was created in 1969, founded by the Church of Scientology. If you were president, would you work to phase out the IRS? <laughs> Immediately. Anonymous. The following is important information concerning the history of Scientology and the Ron Paul campaign. In a 2008 interview on Blunt Talk Radio a representative from Texas contacted Ron Paul with concerns about the Church of Scientology, specifically Scientology's tax-exempt status. Ron Paul's reply was read on the air. Posted on the site there in Texas where they're trying to outlaw Scientology at the, at, from the RNC. So I'm going to try and bring them on, and, and hopefully they are who they say they are. Well, there, I, I will tell you that there are multiple chairs from the precincts down there that do have the power to do that, that are in anonymous, so it could very well be. <clears throat> yes. Uh, hello? Yes. Is this maybe? Yes, this is maybe. Um, oh, good. I was the uh, Galveston County delegate yesterday. Who, yes, that's uh, presented great. The resolution. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, well, I... I was uh, brought in as a delegate under the Ron Paul people, and uh, I'm one of six out of uh, District 341, or Precinct 341, and uh, I, wrote, I wrote a resolution out the day before the, 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 day before the uh, convention, and uh, just proofread it, asked some people on, on my uh, IRC if it was okay, and made some changes to it, and, and it got it worked out, and uh, I submitted it yesterday, and uh, after I had submitted it, they, uh, they called for a vote, and every single person raised their hands, and uh, it got passed. And uh, it's going to appear, you can go to the website, it's called uh, GalvestonCountyGOP.com, and I'm not sure when they're going to post the resolution on the website, but uh, that's where they said they would be posted. And uh, it's going to be uh, resolution issue number nine, resolutions concerning religious issues, number 162. And it's going to say, be it resolved that the Church of Scientology in the state of Texas be officially regarded as a business and not as a religion. That's the only part of it they're going to be using. What do you think the chances are of getting that passed? And what will the ramifications actually be? Uh, the chances of it getting passed, um, this is a, it started out as a, it, well, it's a grassroots campaign, really. And a lot of people think it doesn't have much pool. But if we get enough people involved and enough words out, um, I think it can become an influential, issue, an influential uh, resolution that can be made into a law one day under the Republican Party. Well, God, if the Republicans are on this, man, I may have to change my vote. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I actually sent Ron Paul an email, and he responded saying he did not support removing their tax exempt status because he doesn't like taxes. And that's one reason Scientology loves Ron Paul so much, which is stupid. But well, that's bad. Well, who does like taxes? No one likes taxes, but that doesn't mean yeah. it, you know it's pre it, it, a potential president can't see that a, a, so a group is totally abusing our you know establishment clause, and that's what really pissed me off. I mean, they should be allowed to have. 
shouldn't have a special privilege for one religion over another. Would you like me to read the email he sent to me? Sure, go ahead. Okay, this is from Dr. Ron Paul. Thank you for contacting my office. I am always happy when the people of 14th District of Texas take time to let me know where they stand on important issues facing the country. I understand your concerns about Scientology. However, I do not favor revoking Scientology's tax exemption because I oppose raising federal taxes on any group or individual, even when I disagree with elements of that group's political agenda. The precedent of tax-exempt revocation may someday be used to justify raising taxes on other tax-exempt groups, including religious organizations. Thanks for writing. Please do not hesitate to contact my office with any other questions, comments, or suggestions. Sincerely, Ron Paul. Well, don't you think, then, that if he was so opposed to revoking their tax-exempt status that he might be opposed to the fact that they can make claims on their religious education and have other people pay them back? I would assume. Yeah, that would that would be the point to make, I think, with him, is that, hey, you're actually paying them money. Well, yeah. exactly. I like that even less. What they didn't know is when Ron Paul said, I understand your concerns about Scientology, Paul knew much more than he was letting on. Paul and his campaign have had a close working relationship to the Church of Scientology through their front group, Citizens Commission for Human Rights. His claim to not support revoking Scientology's tax exemptions probably has less to do with opposition to raising federal taxes and more to do with a private meeting Paul had with the CCHR the year before in November of 2007 where attendees paid a minimum of $1,000 to speak with Paul. From a CCHR email in November 2007 by Scientologist Mike Kaplan, I have arranged a private one-hour luncheon with Ron Paul on 1128th Sin Street. Pete, when he will be in town for the CNN YouTube Republican debate. This luncheon is reserved for $1,000 plus donors to Ron Paul's presidential campaign. 19 people so far have paid and confirmed and will have the honor and pleasure of having lunch and communicating with Ron Paul directly. There is room for one more. He deserves our support. He's the only sane choice as far as I'm concerned. His message echoes the intentions of America's founding fathers and he is inspiring a new generation of Americans. He is the sponsor of a bill in Congress that would make it against the law to use federal dollars to mental health screen Americans. He is pro-Constitution and pro-freedom. He is a true patriot. He is in valence. He is an ally of CCHR and our group. Our group can only mean Scientology. In another CCHR email written by Marla Philida, a Scientologist and Vice President of CCHR, she says, All my peeps, this was sent to me by Ron Paul's right-hand man, who happens to be a very close friend of mine. In fact I was on the plane with him when he told me Marla were going for the presidency. This individual is probably Kent Snyder, Ron Paul's presidential campaign manager, until his death in 2008. He is referred to as Ron Paul's right-hand man by many people and credited as the one to convince Ron Paul to go for the presidency. Snyder has been associated with Marla's organization the CCHR since at least 2005 when he was at the opening of the CCHR's an industry of death museum, managed by Marla. This was two years before the CCHR fundraiser luncheon of November 2007. Marla describes Snyder as a close friend and therefore Cinder would be aware that CCHR is a front group for Scientology. If by some